afternoon, cloud community, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at AWS reInvent. It's our fourth day, it's in the afternoon. We've got two more segments left. This is a serious marathon, but it's so exciting. It's kept my brain I'm super curious. I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by Paul Gillen today. Paul. Hello, Savannah. Are you as excited about how much we've learned this week as I am? I am, it's just uh, taking on my, my mind is just bursting with yeah, all the right? new information I've absorbed over the last three days. Amazing, talking to all these smart people. It has really been so cool. And learning about all the permutations, that we to think about cloud, but there are so many businesses that have been built around the cloud, around making the cloud easier to use, supporting the cloud, um, as our next guest can talk about, that there's this whole ecosystem element that you don't hear about so much, but it's very much the foundation of the, the people who are here. Speaking of ecosystem, our next guest, please welcome Garrett to the show. Runs ecosystem for Console Connect. How you doing, Eric? I'm doing Garrett, very sorry, well. Excuse me. No, no worries. <laughs> a few names on the show today. <laughs> I'm sure. I do know your name. My I'm mouth sure. just doesn't want to <laughs> doesn't want to participate today. No. Have you had a great show so far? It's been fantastic. You know, the AWS reInvent show has always been a fantastic event. So you're a veteran. You're also a Cube alumni, which is great. Yes. Thank you for having me back. Thank you for your time. Yeah. I'm most appreciated. We love having you. It's going to be great. We'll, we'll try and do even better each time we have you on the show. So just in case those listening are unfamiliar with Console Connect, give us the pitch. Okay, so Console Connect is our software-defined interconnect platform. We also provide what we call network as a service. Mm -hmm. This allows our customers and partners to uh, take advantage of our global private network on a pay-as-you-go basis. Uh, it's scalable and flexible. Um, when you're not using the service, you can turn it off. So you only pay as you go. What a novel idea. Yes, yes. In the past, you would have to have a year or multi-year contract. Uh, so we're making our services match cloud offerings around the world. Uh, the platform itself is in more than a thousand data centers all around the globe. We're just in a, a couple. And yes, just a few. Uh, we have about 45 terabits of network behind it. It's all on our private network, so none of it's accessible via the public internet. And the, uh, we have a meeting place which allows our existing customers and partners to reach out across the platform and share services. So one customer needs to subscribe to another customer's services, they can do so right across the platform on a pay-as-you-go basis. So it's, it's been very exciting for us. It's been very fast, uh, it seems to me, for the past five or six years that we've had the service. At what point in their cloud journey do customers typically realize they need a service like yours? If they're, the bandwidth they're getting, the native bandwidth they're getting is insufficient? Yeah, and I, I think that's a great question. I think the, the customers themselves have seen a serious disconnect between their direct connections to the cloud service providers, uh, where the cloud service providers are billing by the minute and a, tr a traditional telecommunications connection is built by the year, or multi-years. Uh, and then that, you really lose control over your cloud connection when you forget about it, right? Because and the service the is always up, the connection's always up, yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, individuals in a company may have access to the cloud, that cloud service provider service, and next thing you know you have a a runaway group of services that are running that you're paying for and you don't really realize it because the connection's up, you've already paid the connection, uh, the cloud service is up, you've already paid for it. So how do businesses get better control over that spend? Or how do you help them? Yeah, so how we help them is our service is uh, able to be turned off when it's not in use. So in the event that you don't need the service over a weekend or over a month, you can just turn it off and you're not paying for that. It sounds so simple, but it actually is kind of revolutionary in the industry, which is why I keep coming back to it. It's, it's great. So, we've heard a lot about hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. How is this increasing the complexity for customers? Well, I think the, the complexity for customers has increased due to the fact that you have a multi-cloud requirement or you have multiple teams accessing your cloud service provider. Mm -hmm. And there's no one really managing it from a central perspective. They can definitely get siloed real easy. Yeah, and, it, and then it runs away from you, and the next thing you know, you start to look at the monthly bills, but generally that happens on an annual basis. If any companies like mine, 
you're doing your uh, annual reconciliation of your bills, and that's when you notice something's not right. Yeah, definitely. I can I can actually see a Slack message I got once, multiple times probably. Is anyone using this service? Why does it cost us that? Yeah. That's exactly what you're talking about. Do you integrate with the Amazon management console or is it a separate service? It's Our, our service is a separate service. Mm -hmm. We are API'd in with AW, uh, AWS. Uh, you do have a single console from our platform to manage your connections to the cloud. Uh, and then once you're uh, connected in, you would still need to use the AWS console to manage your service. They're very, let's, let's just say no one is offering a remote console, uh, third party console yet for AWS or any other cloud service for that matter. Uh, how about for uh, hybrid cloud is obviously the, the, way, you know, the, the way the industry is going. How do you enable companies to manage their hybrid cloud environments more intelligently? Yeah, and that's another great question. We, we, we allow that, you know, we're a global company. We have global access around the world. It includes not only traditional telecommunication services, but also includes satellite service, as well as uh, 5G and LTE capability to the platform. So in the event that someone is in a hyper cloud situation, they have a lot of capability to enable their services. You, you talked about network as a service, and and I we, we haven't had a chance to dig into it, so tell me a little bit more. How does how can this help reduce egress charges? How are, are people excited when they hear network as a service? Where are we off at on that hype curve? Yeah, I, I think it's low on the excitement scale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, network has become somewhat of a commodity in the world, mm -hmm. like electricity or water, you know, yeah. for the most most of the world, and so uh, network as a service, what it has enabled is, uh, it has enabled the customers more control over what they're doing. Because in the past, you yeah. would need weeks, if not months, to get services installed, and then if you needed to make a change to that service to increase it or decrease it uh, in, the, in accordance to your requirements, that might take a couple of days at the soonest, and you know the Console Connect platform now changed that down to a few minutes. So Which within a few minutes, you can enable services, turn it up, turn it down, uh, scale up, scale down. Talk like, about so time to value. There's, there's no equipment insta installation required? No, it is our private network, and so there must be a direct connection to it. It's not available over the public internet. Uh, generally, a customer will connect to us via uh, a, a cross-connect at a data center, or they can bring in a local loop, or our existing customers, we just, uh, flip a little switch, so to speak, uh, software-wise, and we give them access to the platform from their existing services. Do you, do you work with uh, co-location co interconnects as well? Exactly, yes, and in fact, you can purchase those services across our platform with a lot of the co-location service providers. So if I'm already using a colo, I can, I can uh, you, uh, deploy your service directly from that colo? Yes, yes. That's uh, very convenient. Um, yeah, you, also, thank you. you also <laughs> mentioned uh, the ability to interconnect it. between customers. So uh, your, customer, your, your customers can actually connect to each other and conduct transactions or, or uh, integrate their applications. Talk about how that works. Yeah, so uh, for instance, let's say you're a customer that's taking advantage of our platform and you're, you find your network is under a DDoS attack. You can go into our meeting place connect to one of our cloud service providers who specializes in DDoS mitigation, spin up a connection to them within a few minutes, and immediately you can start taking uh, care of your DDoS problem. And once, you, once it's taken care of, you turn it down. Now, those types of services that are subscription-based are via API into our platform, so we can settle the bill for our customer on behalf of that service provider or the service provider themselves can bill that customer depending on how they want to set it up. So it's very flexible. It's really clever too, I mean, especially in, a, in, in an instance like you just mentioned in that example, that's a moment of panic and, and high stress and high tension. The last thing you want to be thinking about is what's the right service provider, how quickly can I get this up and running? If I can just a couple clicks, couple lines of code perhaps, or even just through the portal be able to do it, it's pretty, pretty powerful. You mentioned that Console Connect, uh, and I, I want to talk about this because it's clear you care about the, the user experience, the community, and Console Connect came out of LinkedIn DNA, 
And you mentioned yeah. there's a social component to this to the platform as well. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so you can, as a customer or a partner, you can market directly to others on the platform using uh, our meeting place. And you have the ability to reach out directly to people mm -hmm. across the platform, send them a message. Uh, you have the ability to post articles, uh, blog, in one of our sections, and then the other one, you can actually go in and see all the latest activity in the platform. You can see who's the newest companies to join Console Connect. Oh wow, cool. How do I reach out to them? Uh, and then that gives you the ability to begin either marketing across the platform or direct marketing to someone, or directly just reach out and connect with them and say, hey, we want to set up a bilateral partnership with you. You know, how do we do that? So, yeah. it's, it's very flexible. Can I connect my systems to others? So if I want to plug into their e-commerce system to, so I can fulfill orders taken through a, their e-commerce system, can I enable that kind of connection? Oh, we're not there yet. It is coming but we're just not there yet. A, the a lot of that is a trust issue. Yeah. You know, when you're dealing with, uh, across the globe, there are regulations in every location mm. that must be adhered to. A lot of that is security and privacy right. related, and we must make sure that we are adhering to all the local regulations wherever we are. So it's not the technology that's the problem, really. It's the... It's a regulatory it's, issue, yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, the technology is there. Um, and I would say that the uh, the rest is following. It's just it's slow when you're dealing with permits and with uh, compliance. I also want to ask you. Our notes here mention egress charges, which are a niggling pain point for a lot of customers. They have to pay to get their data out of the cloud. Uh, how do you help with that problem? So how we help with this is first we we get a discount from our partners, our cloud partners, including AWS, and we pass that on to the customers. The other way is, is you have a full visibility of which connections you have live into those partners. And you can manage that much easier through the single, I would say, view yeah. of all of your connections. You can see all of your cloud connections right in the one view. And then you can do a little more digging and say, are we using these? Mm -hmm. You know, Because a lot of times you have uh, projects that spin up and then someone forgets to spin them back down. Mm. So this helps give you that single view uh, but again, we get the discount that we are happy to pass on as well. Which, which is a win-win for everyone. And we've, I've been win -win. using a tab analogy all show. We, all, we want it in one place, one tab, not all the tabs. Yes, I think network management and <coughs> uh, service management in any uh, enterprise or partnership company is a real drain on resources. Oh yeah, and it's and, a waste of money. Yeah, and if you're not managing correctly, yeah, you get the yeah. thing on the money. Are you an alternative to the Direct Connect services from the major cloud providers, or are you a complement to them? Uh, we're not competing with them, we're partnered, and so we don't see ourselves as an alternative. A, a lot of times our customers come to us and they want to Direct Connect in a location where perhaps AWS isn't. Doesn't have a point of presence. Exactly, and right. so that, we give them that flexibility of uh, you can, yes, you can directly connect here. Uh, and then the other approach that we like to take is we like to give the, uh, our customers the choice of not only data center, uh, but also region. So a lot of times the egress charges are, can be calculated across regions as well. And that can really add up for a customer. Whereas if you have multiple egress locations, you're not transferring data across a region on the AWS platform or another cloud service platform, you can egress at that location and then take it across your own network or take it across our network. And then your egress charges will be uh, more reasonable. That's, that's it's going to be smart. You're, you're making people's jobs optimized and easier as well as their, uh, their stack and, and all the tools that they're using. It's fantastic. All right, Garrett, we've got a new challenge here on theCUBE at reInvent. All right. It's probably, probably different from the last time you were on theCUBE. We're looking for your 30 second hot take, your thought leadership moment. What's the biggest theme coming out of the show or for you as we look into 2023? Well, for in 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, casual, right? <laughs> no, yeah, no pressure. No big deal. No, so with Console Connect, you know, we are around the globe. I know that a lot of companies at AWS are, some are regional, some are global and we have the ability to cover both. We can do either regional or global, uh, or a hybrid of those. We also have a hybrid approach on uh, different types of services. 
And so the flexibility, scalability, reliability, uh, and the lowered cost of egress uh, with Console Connect is a win all around. Can't, you can't lose with it. I love it, you're meeting customers where they are. Garrett, it was fantastic to have you back on theCUBE. We look Thank forward you. to your third cameo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, I appreciate your time. Thank you for having Console Connect on. Hey, absolutely, we look forward to, to continuing to watch and hopefully tell that story as well. And thank all of you for tuning in to day four of AWS's reInvent coverage in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm starting to forget my own name. <laughs> I am with Paul Gillen, I'm Savannah Peterson. This is theCUBE, we are the leading source for high-tech coverage.